Hey guys, this is AT Surface Tech, and today what we're looking at is some charging exercises. All right, we're going to go over some different charging exercise scenarios in this video. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to be going over subcooling, which is taken with the high side gauge, and if you have a thermostatic expansion valve in your evaporator coil. All right. If you do not have a thermostatic expansion valve and you do have a piston or orifice that looks like this right here, okay, if you just see this either in the front of your evaporator coil box or right in the inside of your box, okay, or if you have a capillary tube, which is a very uh, small tube compared to even this liquid line here, if you have a piston or a capillary tube, we're going to be charging the system with superheat, which is taken on the gauge uh, right here, the low side blue gauge, okay? So, uh, first scenario, uh, the system's been running for 10 minutes, and we have a target superheat of 18 degrees, okay? So in this scenario, we're charging a system that's using a piston, all right? And what you see is this right in front of the evaporator coil box. Presently, we have 55 to 56 PSIG. We follow that in, and it says 30 degrees saturated R22 temperature. Okay? So 30 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil is where we're at. All right? The temperature is uh, uh, right here. It says 70 degrees, and the temperature probe is taped onto the suction line, and we presently have 40 degrees of superheat. Okay, so in this scenario, we have 30 degrees here, saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil, 70 degrees on our vapor line, which is a large, um, large line, and it's three inches. The temperature sensor is within three inches of the service port. Okay, at the outdoor unit. So you take 70 degrees minus 30, and you come up with 40 degrees of superheat, okay? 40 degrees is much higher than our target superheat, okay? So what we need to do is we need to add refrigerant, okay? Until, what, until this pressure and saturated temperature rises, and this temperature falls, okay? And they meet in the middle there, all right? So this, this scenario, we are undercharged. As well, uh, the saturated temperature of 30 degrees is lower than our required 32 degrees as our lowest temperature, okay? So we would always have to get this pressure up above 32 degrees before we were even able to really check superheat or subcooling. In this case, you know, we're looking at our superheat, we're saying we got 40 degrees and that's just way too much. So if the superheat is higher than your target superheat, then you need to add refrigerant, okay? All right, we're gonna go ahead on to our next scenario. All right, so this is scenario two. And in scenario two, we're looking at 76 PSIG, and we follow that into 46 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil, all right? Our temperature on the vapor line is 64.8, and we're checking our low side gauge and our temperature on the suction line because we need to do the superheat process for this system, okay? And that's because we have a piston, all right? So you see this right in the front of the evaporator coil box, and you know it has a piston and not a thermostatic expansion valve. It also does not say TXV on the rating plate of the evaporator coil. All right, so uh, we've already found via our wet bulb inside the house at our largest return grill and our outdoor temp that our target superheat is actually 15 degrees of target superheat. Okay, so what we do is we take our actual temperature minus our saturated temperature in order to figure out what our actual superheat is. All right, so we actually have uh, about 20 degrees of actual superheat, okay? Our target is 15 degrees of superheat, so we actually need to ref uh, add refrigerant, okay? We would just be adding just a little bit of refrigerant, okay, in order to um, rise this pressure up a little bit and temperature up, and especially when you get this close, when you're within you know, four or five degrees of superheat, you only want to add a little bit of refrigerant because what will happen is you got to give it time 
but this temperature will really start to fall rapidly, okay? So just a little bit of refrigerant and you'll get to your target superheat, okay? If, if we had 15 degrees of superheat we'll, is what we're looking for, then at this, at this pressure right here, at 75, 76 PSIG and 46 degrees saturated temperature, uh, we would be looking at uh, 61 degrees, okay, here. If it was at 61 degrees, uh, then we would be at an accurate charge. Uh, now, I like to get the superheat reading, okay, very close to the target superheat, within a degree, typically, I like to get it, you know, maybe two, okay. Subcooling, you can get it within three degrees plus or minus. Superheat, you want to stay a little bit closer because it, you're working with a fixed orifice, okay. Let's move on to scenario three. All right, this is scenario three. All right, we see that the system has a thermostatic expansion valve right in front of the evaporator coil. It can either be in front of or inside of the evaporator coil box, okay? So since we know it has a TXV, all right, and it can also say TXV on the rating plate of the evaporator coil, uh, because of that, we check our charge with the high side gauge, all right? So what we do is we look to see what pressure it is. These are five PSIG increments and we see that we have 185 PSIG. We bring that into a saturated temperature for R22 of 87 degrees, okay? 87 degrees minus the actual temperature on the liquid line, all right? And it's only within three inches of the surface port at the outdoor unit, right? Right where we have this attached to as well. And it looks like we have, if this is 87 degrees minus 81, then we have 6 degrees of subcooling, okay? What we need to do in this scenario is if the uh, subcooling is too low compared to the target subcooling, okay, that you can find the tar target subcooling on the rating plate, all right? So we see we have 12 degrees of target subcooling, and we have roughly 5 to 6 degrees of actual subcooling, Okay, we need to add refrigerant. As you add refrigerant, the subcooling will increase. Okay, this pressure uh, will increase, and this temperature will increase, and this temperature will fall. Okay, so you're going to widen the gap. All right, and you're going to be increasing the subcooling. Okay, so that's that. And we also see that our vapor side is above 32 degrees, so we need to always make sure that our Vapor pressure is above 32 degrees even when checking subcooling. All right, but it is above 32. We just need to add a little bit of refrigerant. You don't have to add a whole lot yet. You know, just add a little bit at a time and wait and just check your uh, check your temperature. Give it time to uh, let the refrigerant into the system and flow through. All right, that temperature will drop over time. All right, now we're going to go on to scenario four. All right, this is scenario four. And we know it has a TXV because it says it on the face of the rating plate. And as well, we found the TXV in the inside of the evaporator coil. All right. So we then know to take our pressure and charging method off of our high side gauge due to the subcooling method. All right. It says indoor TXV subcooling. The target is 12 degrees of subcooling. It's R22. So we have 185 PSIG here. On the outer ring, we followed into R22, which is the green ring, and that's the saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil, all right, back here. So that actually says about 95 degrees in the middle of the condenser coil, okay? This temp sensor is taped within three inches of the liquid line service port, and it says 70.5 degrees, all right? So we take 95 degrees minus 75, um, sorry, 70.5 and what we come up with is 24.5 degrees of actual subcooling, okay? So 24.5 degrees of subcooling is much, much higher than 12 degrees of our target subcooling. So that means the system's overcharged. And in that case, then what we would need to do is we would be pulling refrigerant out of the high side uh, and into the recovery bottle, okay? Until we got down to 12 degrees of subcooling, okay? So it would be kind of like the reverse of charging. We would be dumping a liquid into the recovery bottle, all right? Just a little at a time. And then we just give it time and then check to make sure we're within 
somewhere between 3 degrees plus or minus 12 degrees. So if it was 15 degrees actual or 9 degrees actual, that would still be within the charge. Um, but we want to get as close to 12 as possible or maybe just a little bit higher, like 13 or 14 degrees of actual subcore. All right. So I hope that helped. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at EC Service Tech Channel.